Welcome! In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how you can scrape product details from an e-commerce website using Parsub. To begin, open your Parsub client, click on New Project, and enter the URL of the website that you would like to scrape data from. For this example, we'll be using Amazon.com's Literature and Fiction category. Click on Start Project on this URL. Once the page is finished loading, you'll notice that there are three areas on the Parsub client. On the left-hand side is where you have your commands and your settings. In the middle is the interactive view of the website. And at the very bottom is where you're going to be able to preview your data in either CSV or JSON format. On the Amazon website, you can find the products within a category by scrolling down to the bottom of the page. Here, you have a list of products that are spread over the course of several pages, which you can see at the very bottom. Clicking into each product will also bring you to that particular products page where you can get more information for that product. In this tutorial, I'll demonstrate how you can select all products on all pages, click into each one, and obtain more data from within each product page. By default, we already have an empty selection command in our commands menu. If we scroll up to the very top of the results, we can use this command to click on the very first result title. In this case, The Woman in the Window, a novel. When you've clicked on the title, you'll notice three things. First of all, it's now showing that one element has been selected with our selection one. This element is highlighted in green on the page, in this case, the title of this book, and you can preview that at the very bottom of the screen. Where Parsum finds a link, it will extract both the name and the URL for that link by default. We can also switch to CSV Excel to view that data in a different format. Parsa will also highlight similar elements in yellow below, in this case, other book titles. If we click on one of the other book titles, it will know that we want to select all of the different book titles on the page. This is now updated to 11 elements, which you can see here below in the preview. You have the option of deleting extract URL if you would no longer like to see the URL in your data. You can also rename selection one to something more descriptive by double clicking on it and entering that word, for example, product. If there were information that we wanted to get to relate to this product below, for example, the author name or the price, we can use a relative select command. Relative select commands are used to relate data. You can add one by clicking on the plus sign next to begin new entry in product and choosing relative select. We'll begin by selecting the element we want to relate, in this case, the book title. And this will give us a little arrow that we can use to click on the element we would like to relate it to, for example, the author. Parsub should now select all of the authors related to each book on the page and add that to your data. Again, it's called this selection one, but we can also just type in something more descriptive, such as author. Because author is a link, it's also extracted the author URL. However, we can remove that by clicking on the plus sign next to relative author, going to advanced, and choosing an extract command. Extract commands allow us to extract different information from our selection, in this case, the text, which is the author name. We can add in more relative select commands to select more data by clicking on the plus sign next to begin your entry in product, choosing a relative select command, clicking on the title, and then clicking on the new piece of information, for example, the date. This has been added to our data below, and again we can rename selection 1 to date. We've now selected the product name, author, and date from all of the products on the first page of results. To have Parsub repeat this with the remaining pages, we're going to select the next button and tell Parsub to continue clicking on it each time it reaches the end of our results page. To do this, click on the plus sign next to select page, choose a select command, and select the next button. We can rename that to next to make that a little more descriptive. And then click on the plus sign next to select and extract next and choose a click command to click on it. A pop-up will appear asking us what we want to do once we've clicked on that element. In this case, we're going to say that we're going to go to the existing template main template, which is the template that we just built, as we want all of the remaining pages to do the exact same actions as we've taken on the first page, which is to select the product and extract its name, author, and date. Click on Go to Existing Template. Our current product will extract the product name, author, and date for every single product on all 100 pages of results. 
However, we can also request the Parsub click into each product so we can get more data from the product page. To do so, click on the plus sign next to begin new entry in product and choose a click command. This time we'll want to create a new template as the layout for our product page is going to be different from the layout of this main template page. We can call this details, for example. Click on create new template and the new page for the first book should load with a new template on the left hand side where we can add in new commands for this particular page layout. On a product page, you'll typically use a new select command for each piece of data that you want to extract. You can think of each select command as corresponding to a different column title on your CSV file. We'll start each of these select commands from the select page section. Click on the plus sign next to select page, choose a select command, and select the price for example. This should highlight the price, add the price below, and we can rename this to price to make it more descriptive. To select another piece of information, click on the plus sign next to select page, choose a select command, and click on the number of reviews, for example. Again, we can call this number of reviews, and this has been highlighted on the page and extracted below. Because it has that URL, if we want to remove it, we can again click on the plus sign, go to advance, and choose extract to extract only the text that appears. We'll continue to add a new select command for each piece of data that we want to extract. On some pages, such as Amazon, you'll find that there is a section with a table containing data. For example, the product details here below. If you have a case where the data you want to select is not always in the same order, what you can do instead is tell Parsup to look through all of these titles, find the one that has the information you're looking for, for example, product dimensions, and then select the data that appears to the right-hand side of it. To do this, click on the plus sign next to select page, choose a select command, and click on the very first text uh, that appears on the left hand side, in this case hardcover. It should highlight the rest of the text in yellow. If we click on the second one, it should highlight all of them and extract all of those. We don't want to extract each one, so what we'll do is we'll click on the X sign to delete begin new entry in selection 1. Now all nine elements are selected, but we're not currently doing anything with it, such as extracting that. We can make this more descriptive by calling it labels, for example. Click on the plus sign next to labels, go to advanced, and choose a conditional command. Our condition in this case will be to check if the bold label contains a specific word, and if so, get the data that appears to the right hand side of it. We're going to add a little snippet of code here, which is dollar sign $E, which stands for the element, dot text, which stands for the text for that element, dot contains. Then we'll open brackets, open quotation marks, and put in the text that should contain on the label. This is case sensitive. So for example, if we wanted to put language, we would write language like that, and then close our quotation marks and parentheses. If the condition is met, in this case, if the label contains the word language, we want to tell it to get the information that's on the right hand side. To do this, click on the plus sign next to our conditional, Choose a relative select command, click on the label, and then hover over the information on the right hand side. You'll notice that selecting this whole long line. What we want to do is just select the word English. There's a shortcut for this that you can use, which is to hold down Control on Windows or Command on Mac, and the number 2 to zoom in to that particular element. Click on it. You should now see arrows going from each of the labels to the information on the right hand side. It hasn't done so for these two below, but that's because their information is laid out a little bit differently. We can also tell Parsub to get this information, but to keep this tutorial simple, we'll be avoiding this for now. If you have any questions on how to do this, you can always contact our support team for help. We can rename selection one to language, and that way language is what will appear on the column header below. To do this for another label, we can hover over the label selection, hold down the shift key to bring up the plus sign, click on it, go to conditional, add a new conditional command, and then add in our condition again. So if dollar sign E dot text dot contains, and enter the new label, for example, publisher, and then use a new relative select to map from the um, label over to the information by zooming into it. Then we can call that publisher. 
However, another option is to click on the command itself, hold down Control or Command on Mac and C, copy that and then hold down Control or Command and V to paste those commands. These will be nested below our command, but we can click on it and drag it out to here and that will add that new command. And then we can just change the word. For example, we can change it to a new label like hardcover. And change the name of our information to hardcover as well. And that will now extract hardcover. In short, what this is doing is selecting all labels, checking for these conditions, and if those conditions are met, it's extracting the data that appears on the right-hand side. To test run our project and make sure it's behaving as expected, we can click on the menu icon here and go to Test Run. Click on Open a Test Run. Test Run lets you run the project locally on your computer to understand how it's behaving. This button here will allow you to go step by step slowly so you can understand how each step is behaving, whereas the play button will let you play up to five pages to see what it's doing at a faster speed. If we click on the play button, we'll see that our project opens, goes to the literature and fiction category, clicks into the first book, gets the information that we've requested, goes to the second book, gets the information requested from there, and will continue to do so up to five pages on this sample. If we want to stop the test run, we can click on the stop button, which will return us to our project. To collect your data, you can click on the menu icon again, choose run, and then save and run. Your project will start running on our servers and we'll let you know what stage is at here above. When the project has finished running, you can download your data in CSV or JSON. We also offer an API that you can use to integrate your data into other applications. In this tutorial, I have demonstrated how you can scrape product details from an e-commerce website. Should you have any questions about your own project, please feel free to contact us at helloatparsub.com. We're always happy to help. Happy parsing!